In this video, we're taking a look at a decentralized communication technology called Meshtastic that requires no existing infrastructure, no towers, no satellites, no internet. This makes it ideal for camping, hiking, or any kind of grid down situation where you still want to be able to communicate with others. You know, say there's a cyber attack, a power outage, or even a planned network upgrade that just doesn't go to plan and takes out a national carrier for hours. Well, with Meshtastic, you have a backup form of communication so you can talk to other people on public channels in your area or even encrypt channels with 256-bit encryption so you can have a private means of communication with your group. For this video, I picked up a brand new two-pack of these devices from Amazon. This is the Helltech V3. I'm going to go through how to put these together, how to put the latest firmware on them, and how to connect them with your phone so you can start talking with people in your area or whoever you give the second device to. So let's get this opened up. So within the package, you should have two ESP32 devices, two cases, and two antennas. It's important to point out that based on where you are in the world, I'm in the US, so this one is running in around the 900 megahertz range. Depending on where you live, you might need to order a different uh, frequency. Uh, so, you know, there's not much here within the case. Right away, right on top, this is the ESP32 device. You can confirm the version on the back. So this is the version three. Don't bother getting anything older than this version. Uh, it's not as refined as version three. There's other accessories within this box, but we won't need them. You have the ability to add additional sensors to these. Uh, you can add GPS, uh, temperature sensors, etc., and have them broadcast that information over the network. But for this video, we're mostly concerned about communication. The main thing to point out here is over on this side is where the antenna goes, and you wanna be sure to never power on this device without that antenna securely in place. Doing so could degrade your signal permanently, or you could permanently damage the entire device. So first thing first here, let's get this antenna on. It's uh, honestly not easy. If you look closely, you'll see there's only one way to put this antenna on. It's just a little bit hard to snap in. So try to line it up as best you can and press down. Because the screen is here, it kind of can kind of make it hard, but you can do it with no, with no additional tools. But one tip that uh, might work is you can get like a flathead screwdriver to help you press it down. But you want to try to press it down without damaging anything else. With the antenna on, we can open up this case. I find it easy to go to the antenna side of this case. And you can get a little bit of your fingernails in there or use a screwdriver to open it from this side. It should just snap off. It's up to you if you wanna leave that film on or not. I'll take off the film now. And you're going to want to line up the USB-C port with the USB-C opening on this case. And it should pretty much fall into place. Now, as you do so, you're going to need to rotate the antenna to go down. And then you're going to rotate the wire around the bottom of the case. And then simply uh, press the antenna into place. And now you can put the top cover on. Now that we've assembled the device, we need to load the latest firmware onto there. And to do that, you'll need a data-capable USB-C cable and a Windows, Mac, or Linux PC to send the latest firmware to the device. Uh, from the factory, there's firmware that's on here, but pay no attention to it. We're going to delete that and put Meshtastic on there. So while you can use any kind of computer, such as a Mac, you need to make sure that you use a browser that is Chromium-based, such as Google Chrome or Edge. In this case, I am using Google Chrome here, and we're gonna to go to a website called flasher.meshtastic.org. And there will be simple steps to follow along here. Uh, the first step here is to select the target device. So this is the Helltech V3, so we choose Helltech V3. And then for the firmware version, you'll see that there's some stable ones that 
are right now still in beta, and then there's some alpha ones. Uh, typically, I would recommend that you just go with the latest stable version. So in this case, as far as the recording of this video is 2.3.2. And then we hit the flash button. There's gonna be some disclaimers, some bug information. The way down here on the bottom is a continue button. And that takes you to this screen where it gives you the simple three steps again. You can leave these the default on the top. And since this is a brand new install, we're gonna hit this full erase and install. If in the future that you wanna upgrade the firmware, uh, you would just leave this unchecked to just do an upgrade. But since we're doing a whole new install, we're going to do full erase and install. And then we're gonna click erase, flash and install. And then you need to choose the mesh testing device, which it comes up usually is UAR, UART bridge controller. So you hit that and then you hit connect. It's gonna take roughly five to 10 minutes to erase and install the latest firmware. If you don't see a device in the list at this point, then either you're using a charging only cable, so you'll need to switch that to a data capable cable or you don't have the drivers already on your machine. Many Windows and Mac computers will have the drivers already, but if for some reason you don't, please look down in the description area of this video to find a page on how to install the drivers that will let you communicate with these ESP32 devices. Once you've installed the drivers, you'll be able to pick up uh, back at the spot to uh, continue installing the firmware. So at this point, the uh, firmware has transferred over You'll see the device reboot. So now that you have the latest firmware installed, you can leave that plugged in for power and you need to go download the MeshTastic app from the Android or Apple store. Obviously you need internet for that at this point, but once you have the app, you, you won't need internet anymore. And your first time using the app on Android is gonna give you like a little tutorial, kind of show you what things are. There are differences between the Android and iOS app. And they have different developers working on them. For the Android app, once you get through all that initial stuff, in the bottom right hand corner, there's a plus icon. You're gonna to wanna to hit that and it's going to ask for permission to Bluetooth. So you're gonna hit allow. And it's searching for other Bluetooth devices in the area, and you'll see right away there's a mesh testing device there. So we're going to tap on that one. And now on the screen of the mesh testing device, you'll see that there's a six digit number. So you're going to type in that number. And hit pair. So now this device is connected to the Android tablet over Bluetooth. And the very first thing that we need to do is on the right hand side here, we need to tell it what region this is. So I'm in the US, so I'm gonna hit this button and scroll down to US. And this will cause the MeshTastic device to reboot. Once it powers back on, it's going to be using the 900 megahertz frequency range because I selected US. It'll take about a minute to reboot and for the Android device to reconnect. But now that it's reconnected, we can start to check out some of these other tabs here. The first tab are your channels where you can send text messages. And by default, the long fast channel is that public channel where you can communicate with others that are just on the default public channel with no encryption. If you tap on that, you can type in a message and hit send and it should go over the public channel. I'm not gonna go over the setup of the private channels. That'll have to be an additional video for that. But one more thing that we'll cover is back over on the settings tab is the your name field. So after setting your region and the device is rebooted, feel free to go over to the your name field and change that to something that's more memorable to you. But keep in mind that this might be visible publicly, so you might still not wanna put like your full name or anything. The second tab here are the other devices in your area. So since MeshTastic is really growing right now, you might find a lot of other devices that are already in your area that these can pick up. But if not, you've ordered a second device, so you can go through the setup process again for the second device and give this to whoever you want to give it to. 
And once they do the same thing, once they get their device online, you should see their device within a reasonable range. As far as the range on this device is, that can get pretty complicated pretty fast. But in general, in, in ideal conditions, these can work over miles and in less than ideal conditions, they can have a very short range. If there's lots of interference, it might only work within a few hundred feet. But in general, as far as setup, uh, ideally you would want a third device that has a better antenna. So instead of using the provided antenna, you would use a better antenna and put that up as high as you can. And that third node would be kind of like your tower in, as far as an analogy of the cell phone network. And that tower would be able to relay messages between this device and the other device. If you're just out hiking or camping, it might not be as big of a deal because there might be less interference. But within the city, if you want to help build out this mesh network, then adding devices that are up high will, will benefit other people in your area and even on their private channels, they'll be able to, to go farther. You can add GPS coordinates to these devices manually or you can add an additional GPS sensor to do it automatically or you can share your phone's GPS with the device to broadcast that. There's many ways to share your GPS uh, but that's outside of the scope of this video. Just know that if any device is sharing GPS coordinates there is a page here where you can see where they are on a map. The fourth tab is how you can share the private channels. Once you set up your private channels, you can share this QR code with other people. They scan it and they'll get your private channel information onto their phone. And then you'll be able to go back over to that first tab. And with those new channels, you'll be able to communicate privately if you set the 256 bit encryption. There's an icon in the top right that shows that you're connected to the device. The Bluetooth range on these devices, um, it varies. Some people report having excellent Bluetooth uh, connectivity throughout their entire house but for me on my devices you know I have a lot of other devices here at the house so there's a lot of interference so I have to be kind of close to have good Bluetooth reception okay now let's do the iOS setup so just like Android you need to go to your app store search for Meshtastic and download the app and once it's done downloading and installing open up the app and just as usual, you'll need to accept all the various permission requests that pop up. You'll need to enable Bluetooth, enable push notifications. So once you're done with that, the Bluetooth radio is going to start searching for other Meshtastic devices. And you'll see that it's already found one. So at this point, we simply need to tap on that Meshtastic device. And it's going to send a pairing request. You'll give a six digit code that you'll need to type in to your cell phone. And once you type in that code, the mesh task device will be connected with your phone. The first time you do this, you're going to need to set your region just as we did in the Android version. So you'll need to tap on uh, the set LoRa region. And again, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to choose the United States, but wherever you are, you need to choose that location. So once you choose a location, you'll need to send that to the mesh testing device, and it's going to cause it to reboot. Once it's done rebooting, it'll be on the correct frequency, and it will be able to start receiving and sending transmissions. So similar to the Android app, but of course a little bit different. Uh, we have this main page here, but once you tap on the messages tab, uh, just like the other one, this is where all your channels are. The nodes tab are the other mesh tastic devices that uh, were able to be found and any that are sharing their GPS locations can be found in the map, just like on Android. And then on the settings page, lets you go into all the extra details that Meshtastic allows. So that kind of wraps up the basics of Meshtastic and getting started communicating, but there's lots of resources out there and lots to learn. Uh, one of the best resources is simply go to meshtastic.org and you'll see uh, documentation there, but also across the website is all the social channels that they have there. Uh, the Discord channel is great. There's lots of people that are ready and willing to help you there with any questions that you may have. 
And you know, given the decentralized nature of this uh, project, there's lots of Facebook groups, there's a Reddit group, and uh, you know, on Facebook you can find the US group. I'm in Texas, there's a Texas group, so you can go in there and you can start meeting other people that are excited about Meshtastic. And you might find someone that is you know, close enough to you that you can start communicating with them over Meshtastic itself. Uh, you know, definitely check out the, the default channel on here and you know, send a message. You know, if you see other devices in the list, send a message on that default channel and you might get a response back. So that's the basics of Meshtastic. I hope this was helpful. And with that, thank you for watching and I hope to chat with you over Meshtastic.